parts uh, just to save everybody time. I got good to see you again. So, uh, Gary and Angel, 8010 Brighton Drive, Port City, Florida. I also have a business in the city. Um, you know, I, I've, this is the third meeting I've attended now uh, on the same subject matter, and I'm hoping that we've got some clarity here to where we can hopefully move ahead with some of these initiatives. Uh, one, one of them is the decriminalization of cannabis, and um, you know, we've, we've had some dialogue around the room here in our previous two meetings, and uh, the chief weighed in and uh, at our last meeting and said, look, if, if these are adults, I have no problem with um, decriminalizing, and I don't want to word it for you, so that's not what I want to do here, but just to paraphrase and then please weigh in and correct it, or you know, maybe you should just weigh in on it on your own from how we discussed it last time, or? It was actually Chief Lovering who was here. Okay, so I apologize, and I, I haven't met you yet. Phil, very nice to meet you. So, um, so hopefully Bill for good. And now, are you, the, are you the new chief or just standing? The assistant chief. So, um, hopefully, the assistant chief shares the same uh, the same viewpoint. But our last discussion was essentially this: uh, arresting arresting people for less than 20 grams of cannabis is a complete total waste of resources. Um, adults with 20 grams of cannabis are not harmful to society. So, why are we locking them up? And that's ultimately what it comes down to. Let's say it's a 35 year old or a 40 year old, and they use this for pain management, which is definitely a noted use for cannabis. Um, and then they get arrested for it and lose their job, and now they have a wife and kids to feed. And while I realize that not everybody is sympathetic to that, I am because I see what happens with opiate addicts on a constant basis. I work with veterans and I see PTSD, and unfortunately, uh, I see too many of them take their own lives because they run out of options. And cannabis has been one of those things that's helped them tremendously. And I've been rallying with the VA for uh, about two years now to get them access. And the same reason why I fight for our soldiers is the same reason why I want to fight for you know, people who are 30 years old and 40 years old and really anyone over the age of 21 years old. This is an adult decision. Um, and I understand the abuse liability. I understand the addictive properties and they are far less our president of the United States, the commander in chief who, you know, really we're all supposed to listen to, has already went on record publicly and said that this is safer than alcohol, which is approved and utilized all over our city. Some some might even say abused all over our city. I know that we have an oxycontin pro problem in the city that is completely and totally out of hand. And um, I know that Pasco County has been one of the largest abusing counties in the entire country as far as the addiction to opioids. So as a person of character and somebody who has passion and compassion, I'm, I'm going to plead for my last and final time with the city to be proactive and let's stop arresting people for things that people should not be arrested for. I don't know if you're familiar with the statistics of our prison population, but you know that we have the most people in jail in the world and we're a free country. So it's the little steps like this of correcting unjust laws, which is what's going to fix poverty in our country, which in, in my mind, I think we have two issues. We have a public health issue and we have a poverty problem. And that's what creates all these other systemic problems. And I, I'd like to see us start with fixing public health. And at the same time that we're fixing public health, I think we're gonna fix poverty. And, and it's just, this is, Step one, and I just want to see us start to be a progressive city. I've already went ahead and said that Tampa and Orlando and all these other major cities, really every other major city in the state of Florida has already been proactive and done this. So we're a small city, but let's put our name in that group. And um, you know, I'd love to hear some dialogue from you guys and let's further the discussion. Um, one, you mentioned adults, but what about the kids, 17, 16? and their life is ruined. You know, I, I don't think this is the forum for that. Maybe there's a, a program and I, I would volunteer to help outline what that program could look like and, and you know, get some mentors in. You know, uh, the brain is not fully developed in an adolescent and there have been no studies surrounding cannabinoid use on adolescents. So I'm not here to be a proponent for underage use of can cannabis. Um, 
I am here to say we probably shouldn't put them into a detention center, you know, and separate them from their family. I think we need to have an aversion program, and, and you know, that's a separate topic for, for now. And I think part of the reason why we haven't been able to progress is, uh, you know, uh, I'm very knowledgeable on this subject matter, and I'm throwing it all out there to you guys. And, you know, I don't know if you've done your research. I gave everybody a packet here that was circulated last time as it was asked for. And I don't know if in the meantime you guys have went and done research on Google and, and done some of your own um, evidence-based research at all, or, or if you've ha had the opportunity to review the packet. But, I mean, this is, a, this is really a, a, a no-brainer decision. Like, this is, this is just common sense. It's 2016. The President of the United States has said it's safer than alcohol, yet it's still illegal. So let's, let's be proactive and stop arresting people. And let's get our prison population down and our job rate up. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, this is Clement, the Assistant Chief. Are we, do you find in the cities that have done this, you have more people who will come and hang out at the parks and things and smoke because they're only going to get a ticket as opposed to getting arrested? Are we going to have an influx of people okay. doing this? Well, I've been out of Tampa for about two years now, and I have not heard that. Okay. I heard their program is pretty successful. So it hasn't really made much difference whether they're going to get a no. ticket or arrested? No. no. Okay. I want to add to the audience, this doesn't mean that the, if the police decide that this is a, uh, somebody that needs to, to go to jail, like the present laws, our laws are subordinate to the state laws. So it still will be in the police act. Yeah, it, this doesn't take any power away from the police. It just gives them an other, another option. So if they're dealing with an unruly citizen or an unruly um, you know, civilian, and it, jail is the best option for that person, either for the night or you know, for a longer term, they still have that power. But if this is somebody who literally is a responsible adult consuming responsibly and using this as an alternative to either pain medicine or just therapeutic or recreationally, I, I'm, I'm even okay going that far with it, instead of alcohol, uh, you know, let's, let's give the officer leeway to not arrest them. Let's take the public. Anyone want to speak to this? Well, I wanted to know, um, like you were no, saying, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Debbie Robinson. I live at 5640 Bay Boulevard. And to your comment, I wanted to know, um, well, if they would have a card then, because if they were legally, you know, had to take marijuana because of medical, then when the police stops them, then he, they can show a card. But if, you know, if you, it, it just, if they could just stop anybody then um, I don't agree with it. But if they're going to show a card saying that, you know, that they are medically, because you didn't say that they would have to at least, you know, show a card. Like if I, I'm a gun owner, I have a card to show the police officer that I have a gun. Yeah. I, and to that point, mm -hmm. we're not, this, this topic right here for this forum, and we'll, we'll have room for a medical cannabis program. That's part of, you know, what, what we're discussing here as well. But for this subject matter right here for this segment. This is not about medical cannabis. It's not about anything. It's about people with low amounts of cannabis that get stopped. It gives police officers the discretion to not arrest them. Well, you were saying to use them for medical, though, yeah. for, for medical I, reasons. I also did say for recreational and therapeutic. But, you know, in, in my and mind... I also agreed with the mayor about, you know, the age group. Yeah. I, I, how do you just think you with the, the age group? Are you gonna? I think you do it at 21 years old for the purposes of this I mean, discussion. Kids are using drugs, you know, like the officers are, are showing drugs in, in elementary school. Absolutely. I mean, so you're gonna see. No, I, I mean, I think if you look <coughs> at the statistics of, you know, first this doesn't change any of that. All, all this literally does is gives officers a reason to not arrest somebody. And and I, I don't know how much you know about what's going on in our prisons, but. In my, my personal opinion, there's far too many Americans that are in jail. And so let's take people that are, this is no threat to society, and maybe we should ask the police chief what he thinks the threat to society of, of somebody with 20 grams or less of cannabis is. If they're a threat to society, because if they're not, don't arrest them. Like if I have, 
It doesn't matter. What was, he, what was he stopping for? What, I mean, let's say they get stopped for a traffic light and they smell yeah. cannabis, then they go to prison, you know, and or jail. Were they smoking and driving the car? Paying that, attention? Whether they were or not, I mean, look, they have a broken tail light and they get pulled over. Okay, and cannabis has a scent. It has terpenes in it, and it smells beautiful. But you know, it it has a scent. So if the cop smells that, they then they then get arrested as a person, and that's just the protocol. And so what I'm saying is, let's give officers another protocol to not arrest people. And if they, if it's a bad person and they want to take them off the street, they can still say, okay, Florida statute says that you're illegal. But if it's a good human being that doesn't belong in jail and you know might not you might save his job and his family and, and like it's just it's ridiculous to put people in jail for something that's not harmful and that's I mean I, I guess one good question would be what is your what is the threat to society for somebody with 20 grams or less of cannabis I think that's too much of an open question <laughs> um, to say somebody has less than 20 grams of marijuana doesn't make them any less dangerous than somebody who has more. Uh, I completely agree with you much on that question. definition. Answer. How, how big of a threat is a cannabis user to society as, composed, as, a, as compared to an, somebody on alcohol? Well, I, I can tell you, Chief Lovering and I have discussed this at length, and we are not opposed to a civil citation program uh, for marijuana and marijuana paraphernalia. As long as, like you said, there are strict criteria. You have to be an adult, 18 or older. Uh, it has to be less than 20 grams. Uh, and you can't have any criminal charges with that. So if, for example, uh, you got a theft and then you're in possession of marijuana, you're going to jail. Uh, it would have to be just simple possession of less than 20 grams. And that's... And we, and we could do I mean, we have done. And we can make that a Schedule three civil citation. Well, what I'm more concerned about as we talk of is we were talking adults, and I'm, I'm more worried about kids getting marijuana that when they go up to jobs and all this is on their record. And I don't know how you feel about it either, but there may be some legal problem with, it, say, a 14 year old kid, he gets with some kids and he's got a joint. What's the difference if he gets a 14 year old kid's caught with a can of beer in the park? I mean, it's still going to be. There are juvenile uh, diversion programs that are very successful. So if you have a child who's 14 and he gets get caught with less than 20 grams of marijuana, it, if, as long as he completes the program that Pasco County puts on, it won't show a arrest. But he has to complete the program. All right. Uh, yes, sir. Would you like to come up? <coughs> You just saw the TV. Ch Travis Morgan, um, at 7131 Creek Drive, actually Newport Ritchie. So I'm actually in the city limits, but this is actually what I'm here to speak about today, but um, it seems to apply, so I, not, not really apply to what I'm here to speak about, but um, when I was when I was a kid, you know, I, I, go, I could get access to it at 13. And I smoked <coughs> marijuana pretty regularly when I was younger, and uh, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't legal, but it was easy to get. Kids that are looking for something or some kind of uh, substance are gonna find it one way or the other, be it alcohol, marijuana, no matter what it is. So I think implementing a, a law that allows it or takes away the decriminalization, the criminalization of it isn't going to increase increase the access in any way. It's, it's already available for people. And I, I personally have seen a lot of people go with opioids and different pills and things like that and go really down a bad hill. And I'd rather see somebody smoking pot any day over something like that that's highly addictive and something that's very hard to get off of. Uh, I, have a, I have an ex-wife who actually has had, had a pill issue and went down a really bad spiral and much rather have seen her have access to marijuana and be able to stick to something that she wasn't addicted to and um, would have you know, helped her along with the same things and stresses that she was dealing with. So I, I think it's a great thing you're doing and thank you for coming and seeing it. Yeah. Well, uh, anyone else in the public? Yeah. Are you reading what we signed? You, you did. Sign yeah. this. <laughs> Ken Campbell. Hi. Scott Kessinger, 8150 Papaya, Port Ritchie. Um, I guess my concern with this is it sort of endorses the concept of uh, 
uh, allowing profiling those people that are pulling over. And I think especially in the climate we have now, I think that's something that I haven't heard addressed and I'd just like to hear addressed. Can you <coughs> expand oh, yes. upon that a little bit? It can be racial profiling based, based on the look of the car. That, okay, well, you seem like a nice guy. You seem like one of me. You can go home. You don't seem like one of me. And the fact is, that's not only something that exists in reality in this country, it's something that exists in uh, in, in the public perception. And I just, I haven't heard you address it. And I'm, I'm for across the board criminalization. criminalization. I just would like to Yeah, and, and let, let, I'll address that sure. um, without question. <clears throat> I agree with you completely. If, if cannabis should be descheduled, decriminalized, all of that. But, yeah. you know, I, through my last six years in the cannabis industry, I've learned the process of which this takes. And in reality, you have to do what you can do in your legal framework. And, and so what the, you're saying the, is the first, first This step. is the first step. And it's scary to me that, you know, and this is a real stat, that if a black man got pulled over, that he may or may not be more likely to go to jail for the same thing that I have, right? And that, that's, that's an inequality that we can't address in this ordinance because the state statute is still going to exist. Right. So what this does do is it gives that, you know, African American or, or person of color or ethnic background the ability for the officer to say, look, buddy, you seem like a good guy. I'm not gonna take you to jail. And it also gives, you know, the the white guy that same opportunity. And I don't I don't know that we can change the racial profiling via an ordinance, but I, I think eventually <coughs> that society will come as one and racial profiling will I just, go away. I think it's an important part of the process for everybody to understand that that is a real issue going on. I agree and I am so glad that you brought it up and, and it's real. Ken. Oh, you're not Ken. Allison John. Yes, Ken. I let Ken go first. Come on, Ken. Let Ken go first. <laughs> I'm Ken Campbell of 5442 Miles Boulevard here in Port Ritchie. Uh, my wife is a registered nurse with over 20 years of experience and she wrote a statement she was going to come and, and present tonight but she was unable to come. So I'm here to read it for you. She says, as a registered nurse employed by Glens Falls Hospital in Glens Falls, New York for over 20 years, I've seen my share of suffering and death. And if for one moment I could eliminate some of that suffering and pain, I would in a heartbeat. From this perspective is where I find myself pro-marijuana for its medical benefits. But I also see the risks of legalizing marijuana that it presents to our community. As a nurse, I see the many benefits marijuana uses as an effective treatment for multiple chronic diseases. So we must ask ourselves, if you or your family <coughs> member was suffering from any of these conditions, or God forbid, dying from cancer, unable to eat, wasting away, and I could offer you a moment of relief, a moment of hunger, and the ability to digest a meal, would you want that opportunity? People suffering from multiple sclerosis, neuropathic pain, specificity of muscles, Crohn's disease, and to, and to name a few, all just want one thing, the chance to feel normal again. Marijuana is effective in that treatment of these, of these diseases and often works to relieve chronic pain where traditional opiates fail. No other medicine has the same mechanism of action as marijuana. It is less toxic than many prescription drugs, no risk of acute overdose, safer than alcohol or opiates, and less addictive than both. Yes, there are harmful effects, and those who choose to use marijuana must weigh these factors but it should be their choice. I urge the city of Port Ritchie to use caution and go slowly. It is important that it is done right. Only specialists should be able to prescribe, and there should also be tight controls and regulation on this new business. The marijuana industry is now a brand new industry backed by Wall Street and hedge fund managers, so be cautious. We must weigh the risk, weigh the risk as well as the benefits. <coughs> What will the Port Ritchie cost be to monitor and enforce laws governing this industry? The gray markets will probably emerge to skirt the tax revenue 
and additional law enforcement will be needed. Then we must also consider the federal laws that is still criminal to possess and distribute as well as manufacture marijuana. If it is done right, it may if it is not done right, it may end up costing our city. Yet, as a nurse, I see the benefits of medical marijuana, and it could be a blessing, or it could be Fort Ritchie's curse. Perfectly, amen. Ken, I would uh, tell Barb, we are not legalizing it. We're decriminalizing it. So that is it's it's down the road quite some way. Okay. <coughs> My name is Allison Rocky. I live at 8125 Channel Drive, and I'm a business owner in the city as well. And I've known Gary, Gary, I've known Gary and Carrie for over 10 years. His wife is actually my best friend, and we do everything together. In saying that, when Gary started his business several years ago, my husband and I, even as close as we are, really didn't know anything about what he was doing. We did know he was helping people, because that's just in his nature. And we watched several children tremendously heal and be cured from his knowledge. But like many of you, we were uneducated about exactly what CBD oil and cannabis was. We didn't have a quote-unquote reason to even ask, which is embarrassing to say considering how close we are. In December of 2014, my mother-in-law was diagnosed with carcinosarcoma, a very aggressive cervical cancer. She spent all of 2015 undergoing chemotherapy and radiation. It was very rough on her, but in January of 2016, they told her her cancer was gone and she was in remission. But if she ever had any pain to come back in her abdomen, she would need to come back and have a scan. In March of 2016, only two months later, she started feeling slight pains in her abdomen and went back for that scan. On April 24, 2016, the doctor met with us and told her her cancer had moved into her lymph nodes and there was nothing further they could do. They basically told her to go home and die and that she only had a few months left to live. Sorry. They wanted to see her back in a month to see if she still had any kind of appetite if she was able to get out of bed. I immediately left my office and went to the Magical Butter office to find out exactly what CBD oil and cannabis was and if it could help her. Embarrassingly, and probably like many of you, I knew nothing about it because I never really needed it. The Magical Butter team gave me lots of resources online and told me about CBD oil. They also suggested <coughs> that she go on a completely organic, non-GMO, non-gluten diet while using the CBD oil. My husband and I did a lot of research, and she began using CBD oil. She never felt high from it. In her words, it was like taking her fish oil vitamins. She never. Oh, <laughs> she did the diet, and on May 24th, one month later, she went back to the same doctor. He was completely baffled by her great condition. She explained to him that she feels better than she's ever felt in her life. He was in so much shock that he brought in other doctors to ask more questions. He could not believe that she was doing so well, and he told her she was just a miracle. To us, the knowledge Karen gave us and his findings are a miracle. And I only tell you this story because my mother-in-law could be your mother, or your sister, or your daughter, or your neighbor. Every one of us in this room has been affected by cancer. And if there's something out there that can cure or even help someone, because I feel like my mother-in-law is alive today because of her taking this CBD oil and not feeling high at all, um, I think that it should be readily available to our community. Please do your homework and research before you make accusations of drugs coming into our community. Oh, and she would come and tell you this today, but she flew up to Wisconsin and is at our family cottage hiking and fishing for the next two months. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else from the public? Avenue. All things were created by God and for God, so I agree that there's good in it. What I'm hearing, number one, is we have someone promoting that's in the business to make off of it, which is, you know, we have to realize what's going on there. Secondly, the hypocrisy of if the adults do it, but the young ones. I've learned from example, the children are going to wind up doing what the adults do. So if you try to make it okay for this age, but not for this age, me as a parent, I wouldn't smoke, I wouldn't drink, I wouldn't curse because I didn't have my children do it. I wanted to be an example. So all I'm saying, those that really need it medically, I'm sure is going to get it. I believe the problem is you try to legalize this and get it in, 
what's happened is it's going to be a door. And here's the deception. I talked to the deputies about it. They'd say, you know, I'd lot rather go to a home where they had pot than they did alcohol. And I said, yeah. Do you know what? They're going to have the pot and the alcohol. See, they're not going to quit doing the Oxycontins because they get <coughs> marijuana. They're not going to quit the alcohol because they get marijuana. What you got to figure is the results that's going to come from that too. Look at Google in Colorado, 2015, what the feds found. The reports on that was emergency room things went up, pets that got into it went up, substance, I mean control with chemicals went up, the traffic violations went up, and the one thing was they were actually going out of the classroom, getting it some way and smoking it, come back in the class stone. So if you Google and look at Colorado, what the Fed's report was, even though maybe our president said that, they said, if you're thinking of doing this, be very cautious. So the nurse is right. I believe God created things to be used. But I think to push it in to try to get rich is the wrong thing. Because there's a way. The blessing of the Lord make it rich and that did not start it. He's got everything to gain. He's in business that way. We shouldn't rush into it. Those that believe do not make haste. So I'm going to warn you, you can always vote to bring it in when you weigh it out. You get it in, and you may be like Colorado. You may be having problems that you can't get out. And a little leaven, as I said as I prayed, leavens a whole lump. This is the door, all right. But this is the door for more destruction. And hear me again. I know it was created by God, and it can be used for good. But there's more here. There's hypocrisy in it. There's going to be used for other things. There's going to be more access. And you are going to cause a problem. I mean, I know it in my heart and spirit. But I'll rest it with you. It's your decision. Yeah. But don't do it. Yeah. So, I, I'd actually like to uh, go to some statistics yeah. based on what he said there. And that would be to Google the number of pills that were prescribed in Colorado since 2014. And um, 1,826 fewer annual doses per physician for opioids. 562 fewer doses per prescription, per, per uh, physician for anxiety, 541 for nausea, 519 for psychosis, 486 for seizures, 362 for sleep disorders, 265 for depression. So uh, I agree, let's go to statistics and let's look at those because that tells the story right there and that's a recreational use state by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the earth of the You didn't take me up on my coffee. You didn't call. I've been a clear one. So I just called the eight two oh seven on the post road. Marijuana will very shortly be legalized. We all know this. This is the first step. You know, when you have a baby, before it crawls, it has to sit up. This is Fort Ritchie sitting up. I hope eventually we can work a program out for the youngsters with our police department that, yes, they would go ahead and be taken care of and taught properly and so on. First of all, I have never heard any one of our policemen prejudice against anyone, and I'm here 23 years or more. I don't think that it would be a question of prejudice. I think our policemen know the people in the city very well, because we are a small city and we have our policemen that work with us, that they would be able to tell who would have to be brought to jail and who would have to get a warning. All right, I could see three warnings. Well, then, you know what, fella, hello. You know, you really need to think about this. We're not legalizing marijuana tonight. We're not doing that. So everybody's getting very confused here. What we're doing is actually, if I'm wrong, let me know, is actually making it so that our jails aren't full of, People's reputations don't get jammed up. Some people have to take marijuana for illness. I've known this. 
I'm a minister, I've worked with people like this many, many times. Is that condoning the others? Well, we condone liquor. People have a liquor license, and that, I think, is more dangerous than marijuana is. I've never smoked it, and I don't intend to. That doesn't mean I think it's wrong. I don't drink, and I think people should drink socially. Okay? But I'm going to do with that. I'm going to take another hug. I got oh, one yeah, last time. I got one last time. I got to get one this time. I don't want to hug you either. Now you have doubled down. I want to bring a, a couple other sides of the story up here so we can, we can see all sides. Um, first of all, Bill, I want to know how many people you've arrested for 20 grams or less of marijuana in your tenure at Fort Ritchie? Me personally, or the department? Let's go for the department. I would say about 50. Okay. And they would be mostly adults? Mostly adults, yes. Okay, how long, over what amount of time? Over last year, I would say 50 arrests. Okay. Um, I think, I think that it's important to know a couple things about what happens in society um, when it comes down to employment. All right, things are changing out there. And I think the insurance companies are the people that need to be spoken to. Because today, if you want to get a job of any decency in, 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 this, in, in, any, in, in any area, you're going to have to take a drug test, OK? Drug-free, nicotine-free. I mean, even some people who are taking um, Xanax, for instance, if they have like uh, issues with uh, um, panic attacks and things like that, that take a PRN uh, pill or something like that, can be de denied a job. So, you know, it's kind of. It, I don't know that I want to be responsible for saying, well, here you do this, and we're going to let you. We're not going to arrest you and whatnot in this in this city. Of course, you know, I can't stop people from doing what they're going to do. But I, I, it's very important to realize that the insurance companies out there, they don't want people that are taking drugs. They don't want people working for them because it's costing a fortune for people to insure their employees. Here in the city of Port Ritchie, we have a huge problem, you know, with costs for our uh, medical insurance. And this is going on all over the country. And so, you know, more and more companies are putting their foot down and saying, you know what, you want to be that kind of person. So regardless of whether or not it's 20 grams or 30 grams or whatever, if you're on that stuff, you're not getting jobs anyway. So I don't even want to compare the fact that somebody's not going to get a job because they're doing pot because bottom line, if you're doing it, you're not getting a job anyway. I mean, there's jobs out there that people will hire and aren't taking drug tests and whatnot, but there's quite a few now that are because of that insurance. Um, <laughs> I think that a small city like Port Ritchie, we have our own issues here. We have a lot of police issues. We're talking about trying to save money. We're talking about getting rid of the fire chief, and we're talking about getting rid of the police chief so that we can put a safety director. That one guy is going to have responsibilities like crazy. And to, and to bring, you know, to do something like this in the city, we don't know for sure what the outcome is going to be because each city will be different. I feel that to look and see what's happening in other larger areas where they have the manpower and dollars to be able to kind of, we can, we can look at this down the road, I think, but let's look and see what happens in Tampa. Let's go long term and see what, what goes on in Tampa and some of the bigger cities that have bigger resources than we of 2,600 people have. Just, just throwing all these ideas out. <clears throat> The, the insurance companies concern me because, um, you know, they're literally running everything we do on a regular basis. I mean, and, and, and they will continue to. So that's an issue that nobody's looking at. And I think that we, that we uh, need to look at that and, you know, just consider that just food for thought. I'm just going to answer that. Molly couldn't get 180 degrees further. We have never been able to legislate morality in this country, and it just keeps going prisoners. <coughs> They're going to do what they want to do, particularly with marijuana. And grow your own. So availability is never a problem. Uh, we order. We have 50 people 
maybe we ruined their lives, maybe we didn't. I don't know who they were. Uh, the insurance is going to have to come up with their answers to this. So, I, I mean, I, not to intercede on this one, but just because I'm very well versed on this topic. Um, first of all, I never do anything in my life based on what an insurance company just tells me to do because Word. that would probably be the worst thing you did because the, the follow-on statement to that was insurance companies run this country. So if, you know, part of the, the, what's being said here is that we have a problem with insurance. What I'm trying to introduce is a disruptive technology to combat our runaway healthcare costs and that's plant-based medicine. And plant-based medicine... But you're talking about a different story now. You're talking no, about I'm medicine. just I'm completely addressing what you said was insurances and healthcare costs and everything, how it's run away. And like, I, you know, that was just... It, I, we don't have to have... This is a, a separate topic because we're not really doing insurance. Uh, all this is is we arrested 50 people. That's four per, four per... That's one per week, let's just call it. So one person per week went to jail that wouldn't with this new ordinance. Not one of those people that we arrested did the city make any revenue from. We lost money on every single one of those arrests. I can absolutely guarantee you that we did not Stay win for the, for the resources that went in there. So I just look at it like if we have a city that's out of budget, let's fix our budgets, let's come up with new innovative businesses, let's come up with ways to tax businesses and bring revenues in, and let's be the hub for plant-based medicine. You know, if you want to disrupt healthcare and you want to get insurance costs down, let's all join forces on it. Like, I'll be your best advocate. I'm a, I'm a world-renowned businessman on plant-based medicine. And I don't profit more because if it's decriminalized. I get nothing out of this. I'm doing this for the better good of mankind and society because I don't want to see one of my fellow citizens arrested every week. That's why I'm here. There's no other agenda. I get nothing if this is decriminalized. This does not affect my business one iota. I'm a nurse of 25 years. I've watched people on drugs and I've watched people suffer and I've watched the pain that they've gone through and I think that if, uh, if there's something out there that can relieve them of that pain or stop that suffering, I think we should go for it. I'm, I just personal reasons, not just recreational or anything like that, I think that they should probably be given a break for 20 grams or less. That's nothing. Just for one point to clarify, Allison's mother-in-law doesn't have a medical marijuana card, but she also is testing free from cancer. So let's just put that in perspective, that this card does not magically make you better. Exactly. The card does not make you better. It gives you a right to buy it legally through the state, but it's not going to help the ordinary person who can't get that. I think a bigger city can control. A bigger city is much more apt to be able to handle something like this person. So I think we need to wait to see what other cities are encountering before the city of Port Richie takes on more 
financial responsibility that you need. I think we're talking about 50 people. I don't see how that's going to make that kind of impact. Well, in mind, every time we arrest somebody, how many hours does it take for police? Well, probably half hour to write the report, 45 minutes to jail, 45 minutes back from jail, and 30 minutes to an hour in jail. How, what percentage of those people had criminal records prior to the cop? That I don't have. That's what's in, in I'm sure hours. it's probably at least 50%. But that at least, you're still in control. We're not saying you have to give a ticket. You're in control. If it saves 42, it saves 40, it saves us money. Anybody want to make The motion that you're asking for is to have the attorney look into this, or are we the just making a motion to decriminalize it? No, just to repent, decriminalize it. Uh, we're going to do the other uh, part, the commitment all in the second series of the uh, contractor. Yeah. We're only looking to decriminalize THC. You're only actually the, looking into the, to, uh, the attorney looking into the ordinance. Right. We're going to have to pull my hand. Right. Yeah, I, I, I sent them all. And they've yeah. all been supplied. Yeah, got yes, sir. I do have those. Well, he sure. is not a judge, so we <laughs> um, Well, I make a motion for Eric County to look into this. To, to look into the ordinances in the other cities and find out how it's going to impact us. You want to have a, a first draft? A first draft. Okay. That was it. I'll second. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you, Mr. Gray. Thank you, guys.